Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the Golden AU in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending in this simulation. But without further ado, let's get into this. So it's already here, the uh, Systemic Fool Part 2 Version 2. So let's go ahead and uh, check all this out. Alrighty. So, do not, okay, disclaimers, do not play the sim. Please view every object. Well, we'll go through them all. Trail color key. Pink is rocky planet, not hatable. Green is rocky planet that are hatable. Blue is ice giant. Brown is gas giant. White, minor planet or moon, excluding planetary mass moons. Okay. Located in a UGC 447, this star system is ordinary. However, we shall follow it through life, death and rebirth. We visited this system 4.3 billion years ago when it was only 500 million years old and found a young flourishing system. Today, the scene is much different. So yeah, this is a system we've done before, as far as I understand. But we're viewing it from far in the future. So it should be interesting. Okay, so first of the palace, we've got Zeo and Nif here. Or is hang on. Where are we? Hang on. That's not the first object. Oh no, that's a star. Ha! <laughs> it's the star what am I saying? It's a primary star of the system. It's a main sequence star of a spectral type G8V. Having brightened and warmed since being a G9V all that time ago, it's currently about 45% through its lifespan. Okay, there you go. Right, first of the planets, so Insigni. It's looking pretty hot here. Oh, yeah. So, there you go. Good view of it. What's the core of a gas dwarf, having been stripped of gases and tidally locked before we last fit the system? Nothing notable has changed. It's still a scorched, tidally locked rocky core. There you go. Next up, we got Cura over here. Tidally locked, tidally locked, tidally locked of Mercurian well. It's an airless rock with prophylic crating. It has a single moon Cura one which has also been proven to have formed with a similar parent material in a planetary disk, but not with Cura, it was captured. There it is. It's very small and very hot. There you go. Looks like we've got Woovy over here. Tide locked Venusian world. A bit smaller and cooler. It used to have liquid water on its surface until the runaway greenhouse effect caused it to evaporate around 5.36 billion years ago. Dry ocean floors and riverbeds remain, slowly eroding with time. Okay. Um, and then we got two minor objects in the white here, little asteroids. So there you go. Then moving on to the green objects. So we're going to your rib here. There it is. Very purple. When the was the first Hatable planet when we last visited. However, due to its close distance start, experienced a runaway greenhouse event around 300 million years ago. Life did indeed develop and reached its. Uh, Zenith around 1 billion years ago, being similar to life found during the Cambrian period on Earth. It hosts a single moon, D Drugu, which has a dark surface. Which is here. Or is it? Hang on, that's your room, isn't it? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Where do we go? Oh, I've lost my place. Your. What? Come on. That was the next one, Norbit. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, I'm going over the place. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. First house, okay, so that makes more sense for the visuals. Okay, yes. And there is that move. I completely missed it there. There we go. The names aren't helping, I have to say. <laughs> right, there we go. That's the one we want. So where are we? Oh, oh so there's descriptions of the dwarf flag. Oh, I completely jumped somehow. Oh, gosh. Right. Little minor objects. Okay. So Sagna, which is this one. Oh gosh. There's a former binary asteroid whose moon was Rhea, which is the other one. Or Raya. Um, okay. Cool. Alright. So due to the interaction, the planet tore them apart. Oh, okay. And then we got this one over here. Was the moon have we got auto reactions due to a close pass tore them apart? Yeah. Alright. Cool. Right. Now where were we? So uh, we did. So Sagna there. Okay. Former binary asteroid. Both asteroids lucky not to crash into Yarrow, which is the planet there. All right, okay. Right, let's get back on track. So, this one, Niwoya. Super Earth that has one moon. So, or Ord. Or orbital migration of Or Ord. Um, okay. Uh, it close passes with, calls it second moon to collide. Okay. Interesting. Life redeveloped in the oceans. Hopefully, it can develop into land. This would mean the same fate as the Arab. Okay, Ooh, I'm a... those names are <sighs> those names. 
Right, uh, I completely forget how to say them after I read the initial bit. <laughs> right, this one here. This is Shiana. Okay, that one looks nice. A sub earth with rings due to close passes with Niwoya. Both of its moons were stripped from it, with the larger one colliding with Shichi Anna. With. Is it, is, oh gosh. How do you say that? Due to the mass of the larger moon's orbital debris. Some ring material is still present. It stretches from uh, 9729 kilometers above the surface to uh, so 15,450, with a substantial gap between 12,990 kilometers and 14,103 kilometers. These rings have reduced the light reach in the surface, in turn causing an ice age on Shiana, which has currently lasted for 3 billion years. An ingrown plant scientific name, N. Gaili, has conquered the seas and surface of Shiana and all of life relocated to the seas. Okay. Oh, the pronunciations are killing me on this one today. I do apologise. Right, we've got this one next, so Spur Rote. Spur oat. Whoa, Raoul. It's a binary Agdanian type comet located within a not simulated asteroid belt. Much like its solar system single equivalent, um, both of these comets can occasionally undergo dramatic brightening events, sometimes by 8 magnitudes, but more likely 1 to 4 magnitudes. So 9P usually has 7.3 per year, increasing brightness by 1 to 5 magnitudes. Okay. Has a little moon as well. Nice. Okay, there you go. Right, next up, we're heading to this one. R. Erdanus. This one here. Nice giant. On the other side of the not simulated asteroid belt, it has six moons. So, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, six. A new addition to the moon system was number six, which is a captured minor planet. It has an atmosphere, whilst all other moons capable of not holding an atmosphere. Okay, so there you go. So, we'll go, go through them. So, you've got one. Two, three, four, five, and then six over here. There it is. Okay. And then number four has the atmosphere, which we saw there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Okay, now we're heading to uh, Kaole. It's a Saturnian gas giant which used to have rings, some of which condensed into its first moon. Its second moon was a Roman centaur. A type of large power asteroid that is majority influenced by the dominant planets in the system. In this case, ending up as a moon. Uh, K.O. Lay used to be called a different name, however, it was lost to time many centuries ago. Alrighty. Let's go up to the moon there, and the second moon. Okay. Moving on, we have F4. Dominant planet orbiting across a non simulated asteroid belt from a Kalo. Uh, it hosts eight moons with. FOR 1 and 2 both have an atmosphere. Or more note is number 2 has a mystery blue surface. So there's one there, there's two with the blue surface. Alrighty. Mysterious blue surface which ideas of an unusual coloration being able to explain all the quirks of the moon's geology. Then we have five, oh, so it's six and seven. Let's go, there's three, four, five, and then six there, and seven. There's six. Very dark, aren't they? Hide secrets on their small surfaces. It's a captured asteroid for a long, slow, and lonely orbit. Okay. Green lights, I like it. Cool. Alright. Next up, we're heading. There was one more as well. Yep, okay. Now we're heading to Atria. Atria. Dwarf planet in the diffused normal simulated asteroid belt. It is a heavenly influenced by outer planets in its orbit. It's less stable than most solar system dwarf planet equivalents, as they are only surrounded by one side of a gas giant, unlike this one. Okay. Next up, we've got Impoa. Impoa, which is this one. Ooh. Down here. A comet simultaneous comet in the solar system. It is relatively unremarkable, although it does get brightly in the system. Okay, yep. Yeah. Then we have Jenny, which is here. Oh, they're very close. Okay. Jenny and Epimet. A system of binary ice giants and a keepers of balance in the outer system, with a combined total mass of 45 Earth masses. They shape the outskirts of the system in good and bad ways. They are the main influence on Atria. Yep. Okay. 
Passing by the stars, minor non-simulated cloud, we've reached the stellar companion. Okay, so there's a second star. All right. So we've got four M here. Red Dwarf Star Spectral Type M4V. It may live on the main sequence for 2 trillion years before moving on becoming a blue dwarf for about 4.5 billion years, which are in fact not visibly blue, but white, until finally dying and turning into a white dwarf. The star will never become a red giant. Yeah, no red dwarfs. They just don't have the power. So, yeah, there you go. Right. Another tidal lock Mercurian world. Um, albedo and 10 times the mass. A scorched daytime with lava lakes. That's Messinger. This one here we have Dono. It's a tidal lock super earth with a very contrasted surface and fiery daytime. Not much else to say. Oh, yes. Yeah, so pretty mashed up, isn't it? Okay. And we have. Well, how do you say this one? Eopus. Eopus. Piesis. That one. You've lost me on that one. It's not a good. It's a bit tragic today, isn't it, with these? <laughs> oh, God. Right, so. Uh, Lopsis is how I would say that. Um, but yeah. It's a lactosine planet with liquid water and ammonia. Exotic life has flourished on this world and has become advanced, sending probes to many corners of the system. They also manage to change the names of their planet and moon. High levels of volcanic activity is fueled by its moon, Arjun. Yeah, that one's nice and easy to say. Hey. Then we have this one here. N. Eve. It's a Martian planet with two moons. Despite being uninhabitable, colonies have been established on it by the Lopsis civilization, where they live off groundwater and farm planets. Farm plants, sorry. Yeah. That's got some moons. There's one and two there. Nice. And then we have this one over here. One med. It's a lonesome ice giant, which is unusual, as the giant planets typically have a moon or more rings. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Nor Nora. Why are the N separate to the or Nor Nora? It's an ice giant with an icy planetary mass moon. Okay. Here's the moon. Next up we have Harpoli over here. Large asteroid. Then we have Tattle next, over here. Dump planet of the of Forum, which hosts a relatively boring moon system aside from its number four's unusual coloration. So they've got one, two, three there. Where's the fourth one? There's four there. Exotic colors, you've got five, and then six. Okay. And we've got Om over here. So another comet. Right, so now we're zooming out more. Wandering into instead of space, we find Broker. And Bozder. Binary of a brand dwarf and a sub brand dwarf. Over here. Alrighty. There they are. Nice. Um, binary of a brand dwarf and a sub brand dwarf. Captured in the recent past. Orbital decay means they will eventually merge into an ultra cool dwarf, barely a main sequence star. Okay. So there you go. There's the two there. They're very close, aren't they? Two brand dwarf duos. Alrighty, so that does it for this system. So the Sin Systematic Full Part 2 version 2. So there we are. Let's get our lineup of the system. There is everything there. Alrighty. Oh, the gas giants look very similar when you line them up, don't they? Oh, yes. Quite a realistic feel to a lot of these. There's the full lineup of everything there. I did like that one with the rings, I have to say. That one looked good. City lights are a nice exotic colours on these guys as well. There's the green lights on that one, actually see that initially so there we are there is the full lineup so there we go again a massive thank you to the creator of this system uh, the golden au for submitting this let's know what you think down below in the comments of this system i do apologize for my sheer butchering of a lot of the words in this one i have to say <laughs> that didn't go too great let me know what you think in the comments of that oh dear uh but yeah that will send on everybody let's even go for 50 likes on today's video as well guys subscribe for more help us in the journey to 50,000 subscribers and yeah i'll see you in the next video goodbye